How are we going everybody? Been out today, just got back late afternoon. Came out here to have a look at my veggie garden and this is what I spotted. The cauliflower has wilted. The head's formed on it. It's not as big as the one on the side there. And that's obviously hasn't discolored at all because this one here has got a use by date and that pinking over there is telling it's got to come out otherwise it's going to go completely pink and start becoming little florets. But this one here is wilted. It's quite rigid. Well, it seems rigid. Let's have a look at that one. They're about the same. So this is really upright and this head hasn't formed yet. Well, it has. It's a lot smaller. So is that one. So we've gone from large, medium, slightly smaller and getting smaller as there. So the bigger ones have been on that side. But what's caused this to wilt? I'm not sure if anybody else has had this experience. It's actually the first time from as long as I can remember having this happen. I'm going to pull this out in a second, but yeah, it's still stable. It can't be dry so we'll start with the soil what do you reckon let's have a look at the soil get rid of that there now the soil seems really dry i haven't been here to water it and i can't rely on anybody else to do it that is dry look at that that's really dry but the leaves are so big they shouldn't wilt that easily although it's happening to this one too look at this so we've got a little bit of wilting on that too but not as bad as this one here. But also I should remind you all that all these got eaten almost to the ground and they've come up again. Luckily for us, they didn't eat the floret or the flower in the middle, but they ate the outside. So let me just cut this off and we'll see what's going on underneath. This is like a woody trunk. It's so woody underneath here. I'm using a pocket knife here, folks, nothing else. There we go. I should give myself a bigger knife. All right. Now, if you see this in your garden, it's no point leaving it on the on the plant there because it's not going to do it any good. If it's dehydrating, it's going to dehydrate a lot quicker while the head's on there still. I didn't bring a second too. So let's just get rid of most of the leaves. We'll leave these little ones in there for now. We'll take it inside and we'll either boil this, steam it, or even just chop it up straight into the... Uh, into the cellar. That is fantastic. And that's got some serious density going on there, folks. There's a little bit of weight in there. I haven't bought cauliflower from a supermarket. I don't think I've ever bought cauliflower from a supermarket. If I have, I've wiped that out of my memory bank. <laughs> but it's got a bit of weight. Let's go and see what's going on with the roots. Well, it's moist on that side, so it's only a little bit dry on this side. That has anchored down. Oh, I shouldn't rip it out like that. I'm going to get myself a little trowel and see if I can dig it up. Actually, a garden fork is a good idea. Now, folks, when it comes to growing veggies like I do, they're so strong and deep-rooted, they can even buckle still like this. Look at this garden fork. Now, tell me I haven't done any gardening in my life, you reckon, huh? All right, let's see if we can get this out. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. And normally, I'd say leave it in there. And this is quite sandy underneath. There's nothing to see here, folks. But it's just dry as a bone. Look at that. Seriously. And here we are watering. Huh? Let's talk about how deep is your watering. That water has not penetrated any deeper than about two centimeters, three centimeters. And that's dehydrated. So in other words, that's where all the moisture is and everything below that is dry as a bone. Strong root system, you know, strong, really strong roots we've got a little bit of aggregation going on there but it's dehydrated you can see the aggregates there which means all the little soil particles clinging onto the roots but the ground is dry so let's backtrack on the soil here we've grew tomatoes in the past here and i've used this is my planting mix in here it doesn't look like it it's been eaten up completely absorbed but what we've done after the tomatoes we planted our collies i think it was around march so what's that march april may june july august september october eight months ago this has had only a couple of top dresses with superfood and black grid since we put the actual planting mix over the top of this and admittedly we've had a great crop here but i haven't been watering this garden in the last couple of days we had a burst of rain but it's done absolutely nothing and next to that the obvious signs here is also forget about the memory herb that's growing down the side there what we've had here is the walls collapse on this so we're getting a lot of air because of the high wind blowing into the side and drying this out really rapidly look at this that hasn't grown because it's not getting enough moisture it's sitting in dry soil so this bed here really needs to be topped up we're not going to dig it over 
and I'm not sure whether I raise it all higher um, or just fix the wall back up to the normal level again. But one thing's for sure, I'm going to change all this concept here. This trench was a good idea to work with, but so much grass and weeds sort of jump into there. It really hasn't served a long-term purpose and it's, it's a high maintenance level design. So what I think I'm going to do, if I get my blessings from the rest of the family, is put a concrete edge strip all the way around, nice and deep and wide enough so that the grass can't jump over the concrete edge and into the garden bed and then build the wall up. Now I've got two sleeper high, I can go three sleepers high, two sleepers is just a little bit low unless I put an edge on it, but two sleepers will bring me up to about here from the ground below where we are and then a lot of compost and planter mix to go straight over the top and then it's basically a new garden bed. Having this tapering you'll find water will run off, especially if it's dehydrated on the surface and yet no mulch left because it's blown away and the birds have been around here continuously every day digging it up. And we're at the end of this season with the uh, leafy greens. They should have been done a long time ago. It's been a very late season. I'd like for anybody else to share their experiences with their leafy greens. So it's looking pretty ratty now, this garden bed. We're going to pull up all the carrots. This garlic here has gone to heaven as well. It's sort of formed. I'm not going to dig it up here. It's been knocked over by the birds. We've got obviously the better ones on that side there next to the, uh, the carrots. But look what's happened here. So this has been six months or thereabouts that we topped this up and gave it a bit of superfood and black grit and we got a bumper crop out of it. So you can't say that the collies haven't been good, especially even when the sheep came in here and gave them a hiding. That one there never recovered because that actually got eaten through the center. You can see that there. They took the center out of that. Well, these ones were lucky. They only got the outside of the leaves. But after six months, it's tired. Now this bed here has been drying out the most by comparison to all the other beds. Maybe not all the beds, the entire center bed here has been drying out the most. Um, those beds there have been able to hold their moisture much better because they've been topped up and mulched properly. And that's what will happen with your bed if you're not feeding it on a monthly basis, especially with a growing season like we have, you need to top it up. And that's just a top, light top dress. And I'm not talking about thick layers of compost added or superfood or whatever organic matter fertilizer you use. It's a light dressing just to stimulate a bit more and obviously getting your mulch to cover it properly because we did the little bricks test with and without mulch and the plants are doing really well in a controlled space in the little raised planter bed. But on a ground level like this, especially when the sides are exposed, it dries out too quick and they need to be hydrated almost on a daily basis. And that's a deep watering. These haven't been watered for the last two, three days properly. And that's the first signs of water stress or the lack of. Have a look at this side here. Birds just got in here earlier. They've, <clears throat> they've trashed the joint. Yeah, it's a love-hate relationship we've got going on here with the, the birds. Uh, oh, this is just, look at that. That's just been knocked about. But the point here is the sides are still on here. This is where they dug over. And this is the planting mix, hydrated, right? Have a look at that. That's what it looks like. And there's a little bit of the soil underneath there. So that's only a top dressing of it. We've got the other soil underneath there from previous toppings. But the last topping we've put on top here of planting mix has only been about one, two centimeters in thickness. And now we've got some dill coming up, some more dill coming up here. And it's not fennel, it's dill. We grew the dill and the poor white onions, well, they need to be topped up again with a bit more soil and cover them over so they can keep growing and keep them well hydrated. They're doing well. They just need a few more weeks to keep going and then we'll start harvesting those. So the difference, raised wall, moisture stays in well, protected. Tapered wall on the other side, eroded with the top mulch missing, dehydrates, kills off the microbial activity in the soil. The life in the soil has depleted. Luckily enough, we're at the end of their season, so I'm not concerned about that. But what you've got to do is top dress and regularly top dress. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. You won't get the nutritional density in your produce and it'll look like something nice to eat, but it won't be as rich as what it would be if the soil life is active. So top dress your garden beds, folks. And if you are having plants with water stress, don't ignore them. Hydrate them, but take your time to hydrate because water needs to penetrate slowly through. You can't flush it at once and expect it to hydrate. Here's a quick example just before I go. Here's another bed on the same side. Here it's become detached. You can see the soil's fallen through. So my structural integrity here is pretty much non-existent. 
and we've got dryness going on here. See, it's drying out even though the lettuce is holding well. We've got all this gap here, so airflow is getting in there and drying it out. And there again, you can see we've lost the top layer. So yeah, some structural work going on here, folks. Coming up, stay tuned. We're building raised garden beds and glass houses, not glass houses, grow tunnels or whatever they call those, igloos. So looking forward to be able to control the environment and grow long-term throughout the year, some of my favorites. Check out our website, vasiliesgarden.com. And don't forget, I'm gonna mention it every day, if I can remember, the uh, Yarra Valley Playfair Garden Expo is coming up 11th and 12th. Get your tickets, come down. It's a wonderful place to go to. Lots of plants to see, lots of stall holders. I'll be there, a lot of other presenters as well. A great day out for the family and friends. From Eva Silly, Maresi. Uh -huh.